So this procedure is application of the 2.5 Arthrex Mini Push for the uh, craniocruciate deficient knee in the toy breed dog. The advantage of the 2.5 Mini Push Lock, one is the length of the anchor of the uh, anchor, which is eight millimeters. The other advantage is the drill bit for the femoral site is 1.8 and we will use in the toy breed the 1.8 uh, millimeter drill bit. Other uh, instruments, we have the mini two-hole button, and our suture material is suture tape, which is 1.3 millimeters. What we will do with this procedure is we'll make a lateral peripatellar incision to explore the internal structures of the joint this is the patella, patella tendon, tibial crest. The lateral fabella is in this region here, and that will be the, the femoral site. So we'll go ahead and make an incision. What we have done here, you can see the small suture where we've actually sutured the iodine drape to the subcutaneous tissue. You need to do this if that iodine does not stick well to the skin because you do not want the suture tape, the 1.3 millimeter suture tape uh, touching the skin. So continuing on then, I've made a peripatellar incision through the fascia lata here and carried that proximally. You can see the vastus lateralis here. Now we're going to enter the joint. The, the best place to, to enter the joint is just below the patella. This is the patella here, just below the patella. If you come down into this region, uh, you're getting into fat pad and you won't get into the joint. So we're going to make a little nick into the joint right here, just like that. And then I'll carry that on with scissors. So I, I think it's important also, when you carry this incision proximally, don't come through the vasus, but come along the, the caudal border of the vasus. So that's what we're going to do here. Just come right along the caudal border rather than through the muscle itself. Okay. That will allow us then to reflect the patella. And uh, I might bring that distally just a little bit here. And you can see the fat pad there. You can take a uh, section of that fat pad out if, if you need to see inside the joint better. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Just take a little bit of that fat pad out. Just excise that. This is the cranial cruciate ligament here. And here is the caudal cruciate ligament. This is the long digital extensor tendon right here. So we have the homin in position. Now we're looking at the medial meniscus. This is the caudal ligament of the medial meniscus. Uh, this is where you do a meniscal release if you choose to do so. This is the caudal body of the meniscus. That little um, caveman right there, that's called the flounce. It's important to look at the flounce because there's a study that shows if the flounce is present, you're very unlikely to have a meniscal tear. But nevertheless, you still want to probe that caudal horn. This is where the tears are going to be, right back in this region here. So we'll get underneath it and pull on it. Now that's a normal meniscus there. A bucket handle tear will look similar to that. And so you, and you can see if you have a bucket handle tear, that flounce is gone. So at this point, you can see we, we have closed the arthrotomy. And now we'll expose the femoral site for the application of the mini push lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the fascia lata right at the joint line. I'm going to tunnel underneath the fascia lata. And I'm going to incise that fascia lata in this direction here. Now don't go, here's the lateral collateral and the head of the fibula. Don't go too far back this way because the peroneal nerve is in that region. So I'm going to pick up the fascia lata just like this and I'll reflect it back this way. Right here. Just like that. And then, so here's the collateral ligament. Here's the lateral fibella right here. Now it's very important it to uh, to identify the fabella and make an incision of small arthrotomy just mm -hmm. distal to the fabella. And it's very important to do that because that's, that's going to be your landmark for your uh, femoral site. So I've identified the fabella, and from the distal pole of the fabella, we're going to make a small arthrotomy into the joint. And it's, it's critical to do so so that you can identify that femoral site. 
you can see the articulation here between the fabella and the caudal border of the lateral femoral condyle. And if I reflect that joint capsule cranially just a little bit, there's a small ridge right here, and that about three millimeters below the articulation on that ridge, that's the femoral site. So again, at this point, we've made a small arthrotomy into the joint. That's the articulation between the fabella and the caudal aspect of the femoral, the lateral femoral condyle. That little ridge, about three millimeters below, that little ridge right there is the femoral site. So we're going to take this punch and we'll just make a little pilot hole there just so our drill bit doesn't walk on us. So I'm just going to make a small pilot hole right there. Okay, and then this is a 1.8 millimeter drill bit and it, the guide, and, and it has a stop. You see, we're only going to drill to that depth right there. Okay, and there's our pilot hole. Now I'm going to take the tamp again and I'll place it in the hole right there. And we'll tamp that until the tamp is flush with the condyle. That just assures that your the depth of the hole is adequate. Okay. Okay, the next step is to identify the site on the tibia, and it's what we call the T3 site. It's the bony protuberance just behind the long digital extensor sulcus. There's a bony protuberance cranial to it and a bony protuberance caudal to it. So I'm, I'm going to make an incision just over the long digital extensor tendon so we can identify that. And there you can see the long digital extensor tendon. So we're going to reflect that cranially. And then the bony protuberance just behind, I'm going to release just a little bit of this soft tissue so you can see it better. The bony protuberance right there just behind the long digital extensor sulcus is the tibial site. So what we'll do then is we're going to take a K wire, a 0.045 K wire, and what we'll do is we'll drill that from lateral to medial to exit medial. So a couple points on, on drilling this site. One is you don't want to come below the bony protuberance because there's a shelf there and that K-wire will just slide down. So what I generally will do is I will put my thumb right on that bony protuberance because you want to stay up high. You want to stay right on top of the protuberance just like that right there. Now you're going to come about 20 degrees up and 20 degrees back. So don't aim for a site on the medial part of the tibia. Just get on the, on the protuberance as perpendicular. We're about 20 degrees up and 20 degrees back. So I'll go ahead and drill that. Okay. So the K wire is acting as a guide, and we're just going to drill. We're going to make a small incision medially just over the uh, drill bit, the exit point to the drill bit. Now I can pull the skin incision over this way, and we're just going to make a small incision there. That's the caudal belly of the satoris muscle, and you can see the exit point where the drill bit is coming out. It's very important now to have soft tissue removed from the exit point because all we want is the button sitting next to the proximal tibia with no interposing soft tissue. Now we're going to take the suture passer. What we've done is taken a, a nitinol suture passer and we've put it in the cannula of the drill bit. Now it's very, very important to remove the drill bit. Oftentimes people forget to remove the drill bit and they try to pull the suture through the cannula of the drill bit and it, it won't go. You'll break the nitinol suture passer. So go ahead and take the drill bit out if you will. There we go. This is our 1.3 millimeter suture tape. So that's the two hole button that we're going to use. And so we're going to pass the suture through the, um, through the, the button and I'll, I'll bring it. One end of the suture is waxed and it's easiest to pass that end through just like such. Now I'm going to place the suture tape through the loop on the suture passer. Right? And then we'll pull that suture 
pass her through the tibial site and we'll pull it. We want it very, very snug so you can see it's right up against the surface of the bone. Doesn't make any difference the orientation of the anchor. It just has to be right on the, the surface of the bone. All right, now we're going to come back over here to our, our femoral site. And you can see the degree of instability that we have here. Uh, now it's very important to tension the suture enough to where now you can see that we're, we're pretty stable. Two to three millimeters of translation is, is normal. You don't want to over tighten it because it, it's probably going to have a tendency to loosen for you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce the, the subluxation of the tibia with my finger on the tibial crest and I'm going to pull that suture tight and you can see it's right over the femoral hole and now we're going to mark the suture right there okay now we're going to load the suture onto the uh, the mini push and it's easiest again you can do one at a time and we'll pull the non-waxed end through again it's, it's important to hold that that anchor right there. So what we've done is we've taken the, the nitinol suture passer and put the wax in through there. The wax end was frayed enough that it wouldn't go through. Now again, hold the, hold the eye of the anchor when you pull through because that's pretty tight. Okay, so what we do at this point now is we're going to put the mark that we made in the eye. Okay, then we're going to bring this up along the shaft and there's a laser line just at the bottom of the of the anchor and so we're going to make another mark right there at the laser line then we're going to put that mark in the in the eye of the anchor okay and I keep a little just a little bit of tension on that suture we're going to put the eye into the femoral side here all right and there's a little orange cap that we have to remove and what we're going to do is we're just going to mallet this in and there you can see to to remove the applicator now just counterclockwise you know unscrew from the tip like that and then we take the scissors here so now you can see we're we're really good and stable compared to what we had. There's about three millimeters of translation and that's really what you want. The nice thing about these sites, they have full range of motion. You can internally and externally rotate the tibia. So he's got normal range of motion and he's very stable. It's okay to have the, the surface of the anchor just flush with the bone. In fact, I prefer it that way. If you ever have to take it out, it's easier to find. From here then, what you would do is to close the fascial incision just like that just close the fascial incision sub Q and skin okay so what we've done here the the first technique was the knotless technique now we're going to show you the knotted technique now it's important to note that the the loop of the suture passer is lateral when you do the knotted technique and either technique is fine. Uh, some prefer the knotted technique, some prefer knotless. So you can see we have that in there. I'm going to go ahead and remove the drill bit again. Don't forget to remove the drill bit because uh, you'll break the suture loop. We've prepared the femoral site. Now what we're going to do, we're going to place the anchor at the femoral site. Right there. And it's... So again, to remove the applicator counterclockwise, and it'll pull out like that. Now we're going to take both strands of the suture tape through the eye of the anchor, just like that. And let's see if I can get them both to go through. There we go. And we're going to pull that through the tibial side. So that's going to exit on the medial side. Okay, just like such. Now we're going to place this suture on a button. And again, it's, it's easiest to take the, the waxed end first. And the other end where the needle was, it may be frayed. So the easiest way to do that is with the suture passer again. So I'm just going to place the suture passer through the eye there. Place the suture...
there pull it so you have both strands coming through the through the through the button now we're going to pull this snug to where the button is lying right on the surface of the bone once again we're going to reduce our translation our cranial translation now we're going to tie this and so now we'll just do two or three alternating half hitches we'll put three on and then we'll cut our suture try not to cut the knot there you go and that's the the knotted technique so you can do the knotless technique or the knotted. The testing that we did showed that they were, there was no significant difference between the, uh, the pull out of the anchor knotted versus knotless. So from here, you would close the fascia lata. Close the fascia lata back over here and uh, sub-Q in skin.